It's the KSO show. It's after a loss, a K-State loss, losing 37 to 31 against Oklahoma. This is your basically post-game analysis um, with Jimmy Goheen and possibly Chris Nelson um, if he joins us later on. If not, uh, it's just me and Jimmy. But regardless, you're going to get some great analysis here about, you know, a game that deserves a lot, I think, uh, you know, uh, of praise in some areas, frustrations in others. But thank you for coming on, Jimmy, and uh, excited to talk to you, even though it is about a, uh, you know, a close loss against a team that could have been, you know, a, a turnaround to a season, a really special season. You never know, things could still happen. But again, um, it was one that they almost had. Yeah, it was a, a competitive game. Um, kind of got a big special teams play there late to uh, that definitely help the school it, for sure. Make it interesting, and I think you know, you know, some some questionable calls that uh, certainly K State fans didn't like. Uh, but overall, uh, the offense played pretty well. Special teams played pretty well, and defense kind of struggled against what I think is a pretty good offense, even if they hadn't been lighting teams up so far. But uh, I'm not. Completely discouraged by this game. I'm certainly much more. Dis I was certainly much more discouraged by Oklahoma State than this game, um, based on the teams and and how it, they played out. But you know, I I also think even if we had Skyler on kind of one and a half legs last week against Oklahoma State, it might have been a different outcome too. So anyway, I th I, I was I'm not coming out of this game with uh, some mental breakdown for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, honestly, we saw plenty of good things. Like you said, Skylar Thompson came in and did, um, you know, a lot of good um, right away, which I wasn't expecting him to be even that sharp. Um, but of course, you also mentioned how the defense really struggled. We do bring in Chris Nelson. Um, he, he, he's basically, you know, you basically missed nothing, basically just introduced <laughs> uh, Jimmy. And so now we get to introduce you to it's Chris Nelson. Um, Obviously, we're still analyzing Oklahoma's 37-31 uh, win over K-State. You know, Nelson, I mean, what did you think about that loss? I mean, in such close fashion, we'll get into, you know, the nitty-gritty of it all here in a second. But uh, I just want to, like, hear your initial thoughts from that, seeing K-State drop two. But, you know, against a really good offense and Skyler coming back and actually looking pretty sharp. Yeah, first the positive. Um, Skyler, how that played played very well. Um, you know, outside of a couple of throws, um, possibly the one to the Philip Brooks down the down the K State sideline, and then a couple of short throws he was slightly off target on. But other than that, he he made good decisions with the football, moved in the pocket well, and I actually think his reluctance to run may have helped a couple of times where I think before I he may have taken off and scrambled and, and he stood in the pocket for, for a little while longer and, and made some big plays um, by, by delivering the ball. Um, at the same time, you know, it was disappointing when you look back that if, you know, if K-State just forces one punt, there's a good chance they may win that game. Or if they force one punt and they don't fumble, it's probably a very, very, very good chance they win that game. So, so certainly, um, Certainly a lot of positive, especially on the offensive side of the ball, and specifically with Skyler, but but disappointing that it wouldn't have taken a whole lot more specifically defensively in order for, for K-State to come out with the win. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that from the jump about Skyler, you know, standing in the pocket and, you know, forced to make throws that maybe he would have tried running. You know, they didn't run any read option with him, which, yeah, I think opened up the offense even more for what Skyler's capable of and possibly could um, – you know, be a, a good omen for what things are to come. But, yeah, we have to talk about this loss, which is, you know, a too bad one, and it starts off too bad, too, because like you said, Nelly, that, that fumble may could have been po the possible difference in this game, um, and it happens on the first drive. So, Jimmy, I mean, you you see this this offense chug a lugging right along right away, and Jacardier Wright gets a, a carry, and he fumbles, and they return it to the 70. I mean, take me through that drive, and – and what's the good you saw, but then also, um, you know, your, your thoughts and your feelings when Jarkadia put that that football on the ground. Well, it was, you know, it definitely set the tone for the day because we came out throwing it quite a bit. I think we threw it uh, seven or eight times on that first drive and ran it five or six. So uh, the, the mix of, of how we were going to call plays was definitely the, the, that tone was set. You had the big 
um, 37 yard throw uh, or 37 yard uh, wait did a big uh, did a big uh, throw to Deuce in there uh, but a lot of short passes you noticed um, Skyler did a good job of kind of going through reads and checking down to shorter throws um, there was a big uh, third down conversion fourth down conversion to, to Daniel Martabebe in the middle which I thought was a really nicely designed play as well um, and then you know you get the big 16 yard pass to Knowles get get the first down inside the 20 and then just a kind of a, a goofy fumble it looked like Jacardi was trying to protect the ball well he was in traffic he had both hands on it and uh, the Oklahoma guy just kind of ripped it in Bob topped out and kind of you know different type of thing but shades of the Oklahoma State game last year where uh, the Oklahoma player just picked it up and started running and I wasn't sure we we're going to be able to catch him I wasn't sure that I wanted uh, Skylar Thompson to <laughs> play yeah. I was like maybe he should stay away from this um, just because he's in but you know that's the kind of guy he is he's going to compete in battle and he did and uh, you know just a frustrating way because it was a great drive to start and we saw the kind of riverboat gambler climbing that we hadn't seen before going forward on fourth down once on that drive and then set the tone for later in the, in the game but we'd go for fourth down several more times riverboat climbing i love it yeah because i mean he was he was going for it pushing the envelope um unlike we'd really ever seen from him and you know he said after the game he had to do that because this offense is that potent um but nelly on that next drive you know oklahoma gets the ball obviously after that return you know right down um what was that to their uh to their own 19 or Kansas State's 19 yard line. So they're set up perfectly. They get down to the one yard line and Lincoln Riley decides to put in his backup quarterback who fumbles the snap. Um, you know, one of the only besides the interception, the only positive for the defense, it seems like the whole day was uh, that drive. Maybe you can maybe you talk about the the next drive. They, they hold them to a field or I guess that was later in the in the quarter. But anyway, what do you think of that, you know, defensive stand, but you know, and thinking probably that, okay, things are actually looking pretty good. If the defense can get away with three here going into, you know, K-State's next possession, that's not a bad deal after such a, a bad fumble. No, not at all. That, that sequence of events, obviously you don't want the fumble, but then with holding them to a field goal, that certainly turns out to be a win for K-State. And you'd hope that the time it would, flipped the momentum back in K-State's favor, and you almost um, breathed a sigh of relief, thinking you, you, you maybe dodged a major bullet. Um, yeah, I unless you're just wanting to avoid Spencer Rattler taking some shots or just wanting to find some spots to get the backup some experience, I'm not sure why, why you bring in um, the backup quarterback there. And granted, it probably was um, slightly bad snap as well, so probably not totally the quarterback's fault, but I guess they definitely benefited from that, but give Timothy Horn credit as well. Um, like we've seen him do several times during the year, he he collapsed, pushed the pocket, and, and then he was able to finish the play, which, which he hadn't been able to do at other times this season. So, um, yeah, that certainly was one of the only um, bright spots for the K-State defense during the game. Yeah, it certainly was. And But, I mean, K-State gets the ball right back and takes the lead right back again. Um, with a 10 play, you know, 75 yard drive, 431 off the clock. Um, you know, that was a really good drive to to get things back in K-State's favor. But take me through that one, Jimmy, if you can, and, and tell me what went right for K-State on that drive. You are muted, sir. Did I fix it? Yep, now you are. You're good. Okay. I thought it was a really good mix of run and pass again, which, like I said, the first drive was, was kind of the theme all day. Um, <clears throat> he had a nice, um, you know, we talked about it in the booth. Malik Knowles, almost at times you think, maybe he should be playing running back the way he carries the ball on jet sweeps because he had a nice 16-yard run and broke several tackles and made plays in space on, on the way to doing that. We saw Landry Web Weber with his, couple big catches on that drive. He had a really good day at the end of the day, but a 25-yarder. Um, Joe Irvin got involved. And then, you know, mixing around to receivers, that was another thing. You know, I don't think people – some people have mentioned it, I think I saw on the porch, but uh, mixing around to people all over the field, 
Brooks involved, Vaughn involved in the passing game, um, Weber, and, and just um, really good job of, of play calls that, that mixed different routes in, and then um, a good job of, of Thompson throwing it to different people and finding different people. I thought the, the, the timeout on the fourth down uh, to, to end that drive, uh, another fourth down call by, by uh, at the two yard line by Kleiman um, was a nice play call, kind of a, a motion, and then throw out the bubble, almost really a bubble route to Philip Brooks. And Knowles just got enough of uh, the defender to give Brooks the edge, and he got it in. Um, you know, you get Brooks on the edge, that seems like the kind of play call that, that we should be throwing to him. You know, we would we'll probably talk about the the almost interception to Brooks later on on the corner route, which, you know, we've, we've struggled with the corner route to Brooks this year for sure. And uh, those, those, when you get Brooks on the edge in, in space or middle routes where he can, you know, kind of run a curl or a hook in the middle of the field, those seems to be routes that work well for him. And, and that, that finished drive off well to get a touchdown on fourth down and get the lead back for K-State. That was big. I'm impressed for you, Nelly, with, you know, Skylar Thompson, his ability coming back so many, you know, three weeks of being injured, what possibly looked like, you know, season ending at the time. He ends up coming back um, and played well. What were your overall thoughts from him in that game? Um, just his, his poise and his resiliency and um, finding, as Jimmy said, finding different ways to get it done. Um, yeah, I'm – I'm not sure why, if it was because he, he didn't feel he could run that, that caused him to be um, more patient in the pocket, but yeah, his, his pocket awareness. And I know I already mentioned it was, I thought by far, by far um, the best of his career in, in this game. You know, several times he slid up in the pocket and not only did he step up in the pocket, there were times where he, you know, he would dip that shoulder and take a step up and then slide out to the right or slide out to the left. And, and by doing so, you know, when you retreat backwards, um, there are times you can escape the pocket, but when you retreat, that puts you in a tougher position to deliver a, a, a throw if someone breaks open. But if you step up and then slide out, it, it puts the quarterback in a much more favorable position to, to continue to see downfield and then to be able to, to deliver an accurate throw. And then, Nelly, I want to keep you, you know, on obviously K-State's defense struggled on that next drive and uh, – Oklahoma went down for 12 plays, 75 yards, took 452 off the clock. But that next drive for K-State was, uh, you know, the one that really kept Oklahoma from having the ball, what seemed like the whole half, um, when they took 849 off the clock with 19 plays, 63 yards, but only came away with a field goal um, to tie the game at 10 all at that point. Um, what are you thinking then? And what do you think of that drive that milked that much time off the clock? I mean, it, it was certainly – you take away the fumble in that first half, played out exactly how you had wanted – how the coaching staff probably wanted it to. I mean, at the end of the half, I believe time of possession was like 19-and-a-half to 10-and-a-half. Um, you know, at one point in the first quarter, total yardage was 150 to 1, um, you know, which going back made that that decision to go forward on, on fourth down for that first touchdown such a critical one because K-State take away the fumble had completely dominated the game, yet they were trailing. And so you're like, all right, you get points just to, to stem the tide or, or do you go for the for the touchdown? And certainly, yeah, that, that drive was, was a long drive. And again, they mixed in, you know, Malik Knowles had a couple of catches. Philip Brooks had a few catches. They, you know, had an incompletion to, to Ben Sinnott. Um, had an incompletion to Leonard's, but again, spreading the football around, um, got, got Irvin involved in a couple of carries. And, you know, as much heat as, as Noah Johnson takes at times, and he does struggle some at the point of attack of getting overpowered, you know, when he gets out on the stretch plays and, and pulls, he is pretty, pretty darn good. And there were a few of those runs on the stretch plays where he just absolutely chopped down an Oklahoma defender and, and, and sprung those for, for a decent gain. Is there any um, first half stats you want to add in on here, Jimmy, before we move on to the second half and talk about what's going on there? Uh, it's like, it's like Nelly said, I mean, K-State controlled tempo, which is what they wanted to do. K-State ran 40 plays to Oklahoma's 25. Um, K-State had a good success rate in the first half, 45%. Um, 3.3 points per drive, almost six yards per play, which, which are numbers that they want to have 
uh, offensively, but then, you know, the defense is where a little bit was a struggle. Kate, Oklahoma's success rate in the first half was 68%. <laughs> per down and distance. They only, you know, K-State did a good job of preventing uh, huge plays for Oklahoma. They only had three plays all day long that were over 20 yards, and all three of those came in the second half. I, I think I mentioned in LA right before they got their first one in the second half. Yeah. They had, in case they hadn't allowed 20 yard gain all day, and then they got one like immediately after. But anyway, the, the problem was they got a lot of 10 yard plays. 30% of their plays were 10 yards or more for Oklahoma mm-hmm. day, and that, that makes it tough. Um, and, but the success rate was just, you know, they ended up almost two thirds of their play were successful for down and distance, which is really unheard of. 50% is a really good day uh, for success rate, and that uh, Oklahoma just kind of controlled that first half set the tone and then carry it over to the second. Spencer Rattler did his thing. Um, it's also lucky him. He has some of the best athletes around him. Um, I thought Kennedy Brooks, you know, had one of his better games. It seems like in a while, I mean, I don't watch enough Oklahoma, but he was running over people. Like I know he's capable of, and that's what Oklahoma does, but man, that's defense which certainly was exposed. We get into the, the second half and that's when, you know, Oklahoma started to get the ball more Nelly and, um, it didn't take long for a nine play 75 yard drive took 320 off the clock and they were scoring the, into the end zone. And uh, at that point, I mean, what are you thinking at that point? Oklahoma's up 20 to 10 spirits are probably um, starting to go out the window at that point. Yeah. At that point, I'm thinking to myself, K-State's going to have to score every time they get it <laughs> have a chance and then, then get a lucky break, whether that be a turnover or, or something of that nature. But, um, I mean, you know, there, there were a couple of plays. As bad as K-State's defense was, at times it could have been worse. You know, on two different occasions, Oklahoma had a receiver running free down the sideline for, for an easy, easy touchdown. But oh, the yeah. underneath guy was so open that Spencer Rattler didn't even look at the deep guy and just threw it underneath. So not only did K-State bust the coverage, look, turning the guy loose deep, they – also didn't cover the underneath stuff. So um, certainly a, a frustrating day, you know, on, on that on that first drive of the second half, Oklahoma had gains of nine, seven, 10, 16, 10, 18 yards. They I mean, like Jimmy said, none of the 20 yard varieties, but we're just picking up chunks with, with every play. And then Jimmy, what happened on that next drive for K-State? You know, one of the only punt for K-State in the whole game, but it was a three and out. Uh, what happened there? Well, they, you know, you come out and they ran the stretch to, to Deuce and lost two yards. Um, had a decent pickup on second down to get it uh, to, to third and reasonable. And then Nelly and I both saw um, they ran it what, what looked like it had to be a read route from Vaughn, mm-hmm. just one on one in space. And him and Skyler simply weren't on the same page because Deuce cut inside, Skyler threw it outside. If Skyler throws it to, to, to Deuce on the read. Uh, it's play for sure. It may be it was scored, would have scored. Mm-hmm. I think Oklahoma had anybody in the middle. I haven't rewatched it yet, but, but Nelly noticed it. And then I, you know, I saw it as well as it, as it happened on the field. We both talked about it right after that play happened. We're like, that's a good play call. We just messed it up. And we had, we had the read route we wanted and we had Deuce one-on-one in space. And uh, you know, the, Skyler and, and him just for whatever reason we're on the same page but it does you know regardless it's still the first drive of the third third uh third quarter and in case they go three and out games three total yards. so you you can't say anything but they've got to get that figured out you know but I always go back to is it poor call and defense owned you or was it did you have a good call that you didn't execute and and I still will defer to execution probably because I'm a coach and think, man, if they just execute that play the right way, they set themselves up probably with, with at least a big 20, 30 yard gain. And, you know, on Oklahoma side of the field or at midfield with a first down. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's frustrating to see that happen. Uh, but again, you got to make the play count when you, when you have the play available and in case they simply didn't do that. Case they punts. I- yeah, go ahead, Nelly. I said I meant to look for the podcast, Jimmy. Do you know has K State been three and out on every first first possession of the second half this year? I don't believe every. I think they've gotten a first down or two. Okay, but it 
but they have not scored on a first yeah. drive of the third quarter this year. No. Yeah. But, but yeah, I would certainly agree with you. I mean, certainly in this case, in this game, it's more about execution than, than play calling. Absolutely. And, but in Ty Zentner, he executed a nice punt, but it didn't matter for that Oklahoma offense. They, you know, marched right down the field, nine plays, 90 yards, 427 to go up 27 10 at this point. Things are looking murky, but I mean, the next drive, K State finds a way to only do make it five yards, Nelly, five yards, 75 yards. 75 yards in 211, which, I mean, that was a really nice drive to see from uh, from Skylar Thompson, you know, and obviously Deuce Vaughn doing a lot of work in that as well. Yeah, and, you know, Jimmy already mentioned that, that K-State did a really nice job of spreading the ball around as far as um, number of receivers and different targets. This but is they also Garber, did... too, I almost forgot. I had yes. yes, yeah. But yeah, they also did a great job of, of using the entire field with the passing game. So so I had them down as attempting 12 passes to the left side of the field, 13 to the middle and 16 to the right. So use the whole field horizontally. And while they didn't throw the ball deep a ton, I did have Skylar uh, at three of five on, on attempts of over uh, 15 yards, which which is enough shots to keep the defense honest, especially when you hit a couple. And yeah, and one of those was that 50 yard, 54 yard um, completion to Garber. And certainly we've heard um, over the past year that Garber has some speed and explosiveness that can, can stretch defense. And we just hadn't seen it yet. You know, we saw him get behind the defense against Oklahoma State in case State couldn't hit it. Um, so, so certainly that was good to see and, and a really good throw from Schuyler and, and a good scheme as well. Um, they they kind of ran a I believe a post with the receiver on on K State side of the field, and then a Garber ran the post from the other side and crossed them. And Sky made the correct read and, and dropped it in the bread basket there to, to Garber. So yeah, nice drive and a nice answer by the K State offense. And then um, it was this riverboat stuff that we were talking about earlier for climbing because he decides to go for the onside kick, um, and that's when uh, all hell breaks loose because the referees are acting like they don't know how to ref a game because they're reviewing things twice. They get it wrong the first time anyway. And I guess they realize they, they could save their ass, but they also made themselves look really awful in the eyes of, I think, K-State fans, Big 12 fans and everything else because just wasn't a good look. Jimmy um, and, I mean, both of you, <laughs> I don't know. Like the, the, That was just really unfortunate. Ty Zentner looked like, looked like a really good kick. It was double tapped on second look which I questioned at first, but I was also like, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing is, do we still even understand this rule? <laughs> yeah, it, it was, you know, first of all, you know, immediately I was like, the last time I remember K-State doing this was 1997 against Texas A&M. I remember that game vividly. K-State destroyed a Texas A&M team that was pretty good coming into the game and held them to negative yards rushing, which was kind of crazy. Anyway. I'm diverging on that one, but, <laughs> but it, it just reminded me is the nope. same, same direction on the field. Jamie Reen kicked it and, and did the same thing. Um, great call by Kleiman. You know, I love taking these risks. I love in a game like this, him wanting to do it. And, and, you know, knowing probably his defense was struggling and was going to continue to struggle. So getting that extra possession um, was, was, was a great call. You know, everything I've read is that, they screwed it up because, you know, you can't challenge a play that's been reviewed and, you know, it's been discussed enough, but, you know, yeah. they reviewed whether the ball traveled 10 yards before it was recovered. I get that, but, you know, they should check that double tap. And even I'm with you, Flando. I, you know, I can see how they saw the thought they saw it, but I never thought it was conclusive on no. the replays on the huge yeah, boards yeah. and Snyder family stadium i didn't think man that's clearly he double tapped that thing because you've got to have super slow-mo hd high definition video and i i didn't see it i just didn't you know i didn't and i just think a one swing like who cares if he double taps it like a kicker a kick that's the thing is how often does a ball get double tapped without it ever even becoming an issue because it doesn't get looked at i understand an onside kick it's different implications and everything else but one swing, I don't care if it gets double tapped, but I also understand rules are rules, but it is interesting how it seems like there's still some gray area. Yeah, um, sure. But, but anyway, it didn't take long, Nelly, because K-State was able to get right back out there and 
Julius Brents, their one other, you know, solid defensive play, he makes a play, um, something that we've been waiting to see from Brents. I mean, because even even he really, even in this game, struggled at times, especially tackling at the goal line. I think I remember one in particular. I understand it's hard to tackle these Oklahoma defenders, but here's a, a positive, again, a defensive positive you can talk about. Yeah, um, you know, we've been clamoring for Brents to make a play all year. He's had several occasions um, where he's had tight coverage and just didn't complete the play. And and like you said, Flando, tight coverage wasn't the norm in this game. <laughs> but but credit to him, he, he did come up with a big play. And certainly, um, despite K-State being down 10 of the time, that, that call, as bad as it was, did, I think, bring a little life and juice both into the stadium and into the K-State defense. I believe the play before the pick, they had a K-State had a TFL, which – I think was that the play, Jimmy, that you told me was their first havoc play since since that first drive of the game. I, I could be wrong that, but I think that was it. And yeah, it was. Certainly... sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it was. It was. They went like thirty plays without anything. Press broken up, TFL, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, it, it was good to see the defense respond to to an adverse situation because that's you know as a defense that's going to happen through the year whether it's a, a turnover or, or whatever it may be. You, you need to be ready to take the field and, and put that fire out when there's an adverse, adverse situation. And then on the next, next drive, uh, Jimmy, the offense, um, you know, starts cooking a little bit again, but ends up that pass to Landry Weber. I almost, I really thought it was caught, but I realized, I guess, you know, it was a pretty clear no, no catch. But I, to me, it looked like he almost had the catch. But um, what were you thinking on that drive? Everything's, I mean, all of a sudden working for K-State, they get that interception. They have a chance. Uh, it's 27-17, have a chance to go down and, and make this a three-score game again, um, or at least a, a one-score game. What, what are you thinking on that drive? Yeah, it was big for the defense to step up and get that stop, but they lost 44 yards in field position, basically, with the interception. You know, regardless, they, they had some chances. They got a couple big plays. Yep. One to Brooks, a big 28-yarder to, to, to Weber. Um, you know, people questioned on third down, third and long before the fourth down, you know, they ran the same little draw play. It was, it was kind of a funky draw play, but earlier they picked up a, a first down on third and long on the yep. same. And I think they had the same defensive look, mm -hmm. um, but they just didn't block it as well as they did the first time. I think if they get the initial block, because there's kind of a kick out block on the way they ran this little – I think they pumped, fake pumped a, 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 a bubble route to Brooks and then just kind of an underneath handoff to, to Vaughn on the, on the draw. And uh, this time they didn't quite get the kick out block and Vaughn lost a couple yards. The throw to Weber, it's, it's tough because I, I, I agree with you. I think he caught it, but the problem is he had to reach out to catch it. And once that, once even though he has it in his hands, once that, the, the, the tip of the football hits the ground, um, when, when he has to die for the catch. Um, Makes it really tough. It's almost tough. I, I can't blame the officials for overturning that because of that, the nature of the play. Um, it was a good play. I mean, I think, yeah, if I remember right, Sky had to scramble a little bit and put it weight uh, as, as Weber was coming across the field from, from left to right as you're looking toward the, uh, the complex and, you know, just couldn't quite make the play. That would have been huge to get a score on that drive and uh, just couldn't quite get it done. You know, they had had a chance there again, um, but, you know, couldn't finish that out. You say you don't blame the refs. I say screw the refs, but it's just. <laughs> I, I, you know, the, the, first, the, the onside kick one for sure. That was, that was, that was yeah. stupid mental error. This one, I can, I get it. I get it. I'm not, I'm not going to freak out about it as much. And then Oklahoma, they get the ball back. Um, they go six plays, 52 yards, uh, and score again. And at this point, it's 34-17. Um, you know, uh, but Casey gets the ball back and goes down 11 plays, 75 yards. You know, takes 534 off the clock, which is probably more than they wanted to do. But they get the score. They get down, and Landry Weber, uh, you know, avenges his drop that – the refs decided was a drop because I get it. Yep. But that's up a harsh calling out a drop, Lando. 
I mean, that's the thing. It wasn't even dropped. That's the thing. <laughs> I, I say, man, <laughs> on Landry, call not a drop. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the sad, sad, that's the sad truth right there, Nelly. But anyway, talk <laughs> about that drive. 11 plays, 75 yards, one of the last, you know, few uh, offensive drives that we can clamor about until until next week. Well, certainly um, one of the, the bigger plays to get the draft started was a third and three play that caught me completely off guard. Um, we, we yeah. you know, we lined up under center on third and three. And I I remember I told Jim, I was like, man, if we just hot, uh, hand this off on, on a lead play or, or outside zone. I don't think we're getting it. And lo and behold, we handed it to, to Ben Kimmel, the fullback, and he <laughs> plows forward for nine. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so so that got to drive off to a good start. And then I think later on was one of those plays where I talked about where Skyler's reluctance to run. Um, and reluctance might not be the right word. I mean, I'm, he, I'm sure it came down to it and he needed to run to make a play he would have. So reluctance probably isn't the right word, but um, – you know, because there was a play then later in that drive where there was some room and, and he stepped up in the pocket and could have ran and got, you know, maybe five or 10 yards, but then found Deuce um, over the middle of the field. That And again, I mean, I don't know how many times in that game that first defender in space didn't even get a hand on him. And it's, you know, it's easy to take it for granted now with Deuce, but, you know, there was a, a third and two play in the game. Sorry to get off track there, but a third and two play where we did run the duo and inside zone duo to deuce and he bounced it out and got tackled by the first guy and I was in a state of shock like, I could not believe he actually got tackled because it just doesn't happen and you know he turned that that short five-yard pass into a 33-yard gain um and then yeah Landry Weber finished it off another good read by Skyler stayed patient got through his reads and, and found Landry in the in the front corner of the end zone and, and I believe K-State came into the game with no no receiver catching touchdown pass and they had a couple in this game so so good to see then Oklahoma got the ball back they just came away with the field goal um and that's when it's 34 24 uh you know Oklahoma goes at back up by uh 10 points but that's when uh K-State decides to to cap it off with a Malik Knowles what was it uh 70 or no, a 93-yard return for a touchdown off of the, the kickoff. So uh, special teams comes up big at the end, but of course it didn't work on the onside kick after that, after they've been trying for their eighth, it felt like 10th, 11th onside kick of the game. I guess it was actually like the fourth or fifth. But, uh, but uh, that caps off the 37-31 win for Oklahoma. K-State goes 0-2 in Big 12 play. For, for the record, Flando, as soon as OU got that penalty on on the on the field goal, I said K State's going to house this this kickoff return and then recover the onside kick and go down a win. And you did it the first to the first third of it was completed. Yep. yep, I I stand by that. I hear that. But K State comes up short. What are you guys thinking? Any other stats you want to put on the end of this, Jimmy? Um, and then, you know, also you guys can throw in your thoughts for next week as well. Yeah, just, just a couple couple things. First of all, I mean, I, I get why some of our fans complained about that last drive. We kept, you know, we kind of took our time. Um, I, I see both ways. I think part of it is, you know, that's the, the way this team operates the best. And they'd operated that way the whole game. I know you want to hurry it up a little bit, but but they wanted to make sure they had the right calls in. You know, you, you still scored with, you know, over four minutes left on the clock, which isn't a ton of time in a two-score game, but, you know, still gave, your, gave yourself a chance with that mm -hmm. special team play later on. So, I get, I would, you know, it would be great to see us be able to run a hurry, hurry, no huddle, drive down the field in four plays kind of thing. But, you know, that's really not who K-State is. So, my thing was you got to make sure you get points there and at least give yourself a chance to get that. Um, just really impressive day for the, the drop back passing game. You know, I, I had us at 190 yards on 25 snaps, dropping back to throw. Um, good mixture. You know, I think, you know, Nelly said earlier in the game, this would be a good game. If, if Skyler really can't move very well, go empty a lot. And we did a ton of empty as the game went along. I think I had us counted at seven empty snaps for the game. So that, that was kind of a nice mix. Um, the running game, you know, I, I'm really pretty 
pleased with the running game, especially since we had no quarterback runs called the entire game. We had zero called quarterback runs. We still averaged 4.4 yards per run um, on 25 plays, 111 total yards, and had a 52% success rate, which is pretty good mm-hmm. in the running game. You know, the weird thing is our running game was was only 36% of our snaps, which is strange for K-State. It had been pretty much flipped the entire season. We've been passing it about 65 or running at about 65% percent of the time. So flipping that and still having success and still having a good offensive game plan. And, and eventually, you know, I, I'm sure after the first two drives, Oklahoma knew, hey, Skylar Thompson's not going to run the ball, but they still couldn't really stop this offense very well. And then, you know, the last thing would be um, K-State really got the pace they wanted. Well, K-State only had seven drives the entire game. Oklahoma had eight and, you know, average college game probably has 11 to 12 drives. Oklahoma State's running 14 to 15 drives a game. So that kind of pace is what K-State wants, but it does, you know, pace, you know, we talk about this in basketball with Bruce Weber's system running slow. Mm -hmm. It does reduce your margin for error a little bit at times. And I think that kind of came to play in this game because the defense just couldn't get that big stop other than the interception and that, you know, only stopping Oklahoma one time out of eight drives is gonna, is going to put you in a bind and eventually. Yeah. A break. So Nelly, um, you know the defense looked really good for the first three weeks, and then kind of crumbled against Oklahoma State, especially in the first half of that game, and then really you know didn't have any kind of light against Oklahoma. And I know I can ask you this and always get an honest answer, but you know some fans might be ready to point a serious finger at Joe Klanderman are you ready to point a serious finger at Joe Klanderman or is this uh or is this still a defense that you could see turning around certainly they need to show some progress throughout this conference season you know you look at the the five game losing streak um then conference losing streak in last year and majority of those games the defense wasn't competitive and and certainly COVID played a role in that. Injuries played a role in that. The offense's poor performance played a role in that as well. So they had a lot of things working against them. But at the end of the day, the defense didn't play well. And the two conference games they played this year, albeit one of them against probably the best offense in the conference, they didn't play well. I, I think Jimmy had tweeted that that the, the points per drive was the second worst in the climate area behind the Texas game last year. Um, you know, I'm not expecting them and I don't need to see them go out and hold Iowa State to 17 points, but it would sure be nice to go out and see them hold them in the 20s and, and be competitive and, and get a, you know, force a couple of punts. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's something we need to see. And I mean, I, I know mess takes a ton of heat from the fan base and some of it is deserved. I'd say a lot of it's not deserved, but I mean, he's certainly far from perfect, but, but I mean, you know, over the past, couple of years or year and a half in my mind the defense has been the bigger issue than the offense um and certainly they they need to make some progress and it needs to start against Iowa State um you know Purdy isn't as good as people make him out to be but he's still you know a four four year starter decent quarterback and obviously Brees Hall is a really good player they need to find a way to be competitive and and give this team a chance to win absolutely I mean you you see them against Big 12 opponents. They didn't play great defensively. And I will say, I still think I, I see a, a an avenue for them to get better still, obviously. I mean, I think uh, Oklahoma State, there was, uh, you know, tough, tough things that happened in that first half as far as Will Howard setting them up or giving them seven points that made it look worse. But it, it is. The defense has not looked great really at all in the last two weeks, especially against Oklahoma, um, against a really high-powered offense. But like you said, really solid quarterback play with Brock Purdy. So it, it's going to be a tough matchup. Unless there's anything else you guys want to add to the top of this, I think we can finish it up. Nope. That nope, it? nope. All right. Appreciate the time as always with J- uh, Jimmy Goheen and Chris Nelson. Um, go find them on the boards and Twitter. Um, you know, obviously this one's after a loss. Hopefully K-State gets it done next, or I guess two weeks from now against Iowa State. Uh, I want to beat those guys really, 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 really bad. I don't like Iowa State at all, at all. No, he, even St- even Stan Weber in postgame took a couple of shots at Iowa State. I was I, I, surprised. 
I think Stan really hates him as much as most of the fan base, <laughs> which I enjoy. Yes. Exactly. I think we can all, all join in together and hate Iowa State. This is one that not only K State need, uh, you know, really needs to get things back on track, but fans will obviously appreciate it as well. So, again, thank you guys so much. Um, we'll be back next week for another analysis of K State's matchup with Iowa State. <laughs>